In this video, we're going to learn how to add forces that act in more than one direction. And in order to keep track of vectors that act in more than one direction, we need to have a coordinate system. So we're going to use the normal Cartesian coordinate system in which we call the up direction, the positive y direction, and the rightward direction, the positive x. And this point right here is going to represent the object on which the forces act. So instead of drawing an object over and over, we like to simplify it and just represent whatever the object on which the forces act with a single point. Now let's suppose we have a force, we'll call it F1, of 50 newtons acting in the positive y direction. And then we have another force, we'll call it F2, of 100 newtons acting in the positive x direction. What we want to do is find the net force of these two vectors, the resultant force, what force we would get if we added this force and this force. Now one of the significant things about finding the net force of two vectors acting on an object is that these two forces will cause this object to move off in this direction. So we could either apply these two forces to the object or we could replace them with a single force acting in this direction. Now the other thing that we're going to do in this video is we're going to find the angle that this net force makes with respect to the positive x-axis. Now there's a few different ways that we can intuitively begin this problem. And I like to just get an idea of what the net force would look like by using the tip to tail method. And there's two different ways for this particular problem that we can do that. So if these are the two forces that are acting on this object, we can translate one of these vectors and place it on the tip of the other vector. And then the net force would go from the tail of F2 to the tip of the translated F1. That's one way to go about finding the net force with the tip to tail method. Another way would be to take this vector F2 and translate that upward to the tip of vector F1 and then the net force would go from the from the tail of F1 to the tip of F2. And what you should see is that no matter which approach you get, the magnitude and direction of these two net force vectors are going to be the same. It doesn't matter the order in which we add up the vectors. So again, let's begin actually breaking this problem down. This is going to be the first force acting on the object, acting in the positive y direction. And then we're going to have another force acting in the positive x direction. Now the first thing to do, and it seems redundant to do it with these two vectors that are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other, we're going to break the vectors down into x and y components. So here's our vector f1. And if we break this down into two components, force 1 acting in the x direction and force 2 acting in the y direction. If we examine this vector, we see that it only acts in the positive y direction. So the force component of force 1 in the x direction is going to be 0 newtons. And that just means it's not acting in the x direction. Whereas force 1 acting in the y direction is going to be that total 50 newtons of force. And we can do the same thing for vector f2, where we can break it down into the force component in the x direction and the component of the force in the y direction. And if you look at this vector, the force is directed completely along the x-axis. So the component of force 2 in the x direction is going to be 100 newtons. And since it doesn't act in the up and down or the y direction, the force component in the y direction is going to be 0 newtons. Now the reason this is important is because we have to add up the vector components in each direction. And this is a simplified case. In the later videos, we're going to get into more complicated cases. But it's good to develop good problem solving habits, even for the simplest problems. So let's get into the mathematical analysis of the problem. Now we're looking for the net force acting on this object, which people often write as F with a subscript net, and since we're writing it by hand, we put the little arrow over the F to indicate that the force is a vector. Now some people prefer to write it like this, but I prefer to write the net force as the sum of the forces acting on the object. Just to keep in mind that we have to add up all the forces and take into account the direction that those forces act on the object in order to find the net force. Now, don't forget, since the forces act in more than one direction, I need to take that into account. So now what I need to do is I need to find the net force acting in the x direction. I need to add up all the forces acting in the x direction. And I need to do the same thing with the forces that act in the y direction. And notice that in both cases, I use the sum of the forces acting in the x direction and the sum of the forces acting in the y direction, just to keep in mind that I need to add up all those forces. Now in this case, when I add up all the forces acting in the x direction, it's going to be force 
F1 acting in the x direction, to which I'm going to add force F2 acting in the x direction. And when I do that, force F1 acting in the x direction is 0 newtons. So I'm going to add 0 newtons to the force F2 in the x direction, which is 100 newtons. And when I add 0 newtons to 100 newtons, I get 100 newtons. And now I need to do the same thing with the forces acting in the y direction. So I'm going to add up the forces acting in the y direction. And when I do that, I'm going to get force F1 acting in the y direction plus force F2 acting in the y direction. And when I do that, I'm going to take force F1 acting in the y direction, which is 50 newtons, and add to it force F2 acting in the y direction, which is 0 newtons. So 50 newtons plus 0 newtons works out to be 50 newtons. Now, in order to find the net force acting on this object, that is the magnitude of the net force acting on this object, which I represent with these little absolute value signs around the sum of the forces or the net force, that's going to work out to be the sum of the forces acting in the x direction, but I need to square that entire term, and then I need to add to that the sum of the forces acting in the y direction, and I also need to square that term. But before I can actually find the magnitude, I need to take the square root of the entire term. So when I do this, I'm going to take the sum of the forces acting in the x direction, which is 100 newtons. And what I need to do is I need to square the entire term, and then I need to add the sum of the forces acting in the y direction, which is 50 newtons and I need to square the entire term. And then I need to take this square root of the entire sum right here. Now when I square 100, I get 10,000 newtons squared plus 2,500 newtons squared. Notice that the units of force become squared as well because we're squaring them in each one of these terms. Then I still need to take the square root of both of those terms. Now when I add 10,000 to 2,500, I get 12,500 newtons squared. And I still need to take the square root of this. And now when I take the square root of 12,500, I get about 111.8 newtons. So the magnitude of the force in this case is going to be 111.8 newtons. Now in order to find the angle at which this force acts, so if I'm looking for the angle theta, this is going to be the inverse tangent, or sometimes called the arc tangent, of the sum of the forces acting in the y direction divided by the sum of the forces acting in the x direction. And in this case, when I did the sum of the forces acting in the y direction, I got 50 newtons. And when I did the sum of the forces acting in the x direction, I got 100 newtons. Now notice the unit of the newton cancels out. And then I'm going to do the inverse tangent of 50 divided by 100. And when I do that in my calculator, I get about 26.57 degrees. And that's with respect to the positive x-axis. So don't forget that you need to take into account which axis you're making the angle reference to. So in this case, I'm making it with respect to the positive x-axis.